Trichinosis is the topic for this video. And trichinosis is caused by a worm known as Trichinella spiralis. And this worm and parasite infection occurs worldwide. Now, why does this happen? How does a human get infected with this worm? Humans are infected with this parasite by eating raw or undercooked meat. And the type of meat that is commonly involved includes meat that comes from several animals such as pigs, boar, bear meat, and sometimes other exotic types of meat like walrus. And what essentially happens is the larvae of this organism infect the human and eventually go into the skeletal muscle cells. So what type of symptoms would the patient present with? Common symptoms include abdominal cramps, diarrhea, muscle pain. In addition, the patient can also present with edema in the facial area or around the eyes. The patient can also present with fever and a rather interesting finding is blood under the nails, something known as splinter hemorrhages. In terms of diagnosis, a CBC will show eosinophilia, which is a very common finding in parasite infections. A muscle biopsy can be done, although it usually isn't, but if it is done, it can show the larvae inside the muscle cells. And I'll show you a picture of that. First, I'll show you the actual worm. This is the Trichinella species. And here's a cross-section of a muscle uh, tissue. And inside, you can see that Trichinella species in particular the larvae in this particular photo. In addition to these tests an enzyme immunoassay can be done and that test actually detects the antibodies to this parasite. Treatment of trichinosis involves medications that are designed specifically for parasitic infections may bendazole or albendazole are commonly used and one final important point I wanted to mention is the prevention of this the most important thing is cook the meat thoroughly so that you can kill the larvae. So now let's take a look at a few vignettes. During a vacation, a 24-year-old woman consumes slabs of raw, uncured ham from a wild boar. Three days later, she develops nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which subsides with the use of loperamide. Two weeks later, she presents to the ER with fever and a diffuse rash, severe myalgia, and marked periorbital edema. On exam, in addition to the facial edema, splinter hemorrhages are noted. Lab exam reveals marked eosinophilia and elevation of creatine kinase. The presumptive diagnosis is a parasite infection and the patient is offered treatment with albendazole but declines to take it. One week later, a serum antibody for a parasite species is positive. The patient is contacted and refuses a muscle biopsy. The patient continues to have myalgias for several weeks. Which of the following organisms is the most likely cause of this presentation? This vignette encompasses all the elements of trichinosis and the organism of course is Trichinella spiralis. 
A farmer's wife develops abdominal pain and diarrhea, followed several days later by fever, periorbital edema, eosinophilia, and myalgia. She does not remember eating anything unusual recently, but notes that she does make her own pork sausage. Which of the following techniques would be helpful for the diagnosis of this patient? Again, a case of trichinosis. And they've already done the CBC and checked the eosinophil count. So now they're asking what additional tests. Well, muscle biopsies are offered to the patient and that is choice B. But most of the time, the muscle biopsy isn't really done to diagnose this, but it's part of the workup if needed. And finally, a 24-year-old man presents to the ER with fever, severe myalgias, and headache. He just returned from a trip to Alaska where he ate a variety of foods, including walrus meat. Patient has a temperature of 39 Celsius, BP is 120 over 90, pulse is 95, respiratory rate is 20. Patient is in moderate distress. He has some paler, but no cyanosis. He has periorbital edema and subconjunctival hemorrhages affecting both eyes. There is evidence of blood under the bed of his fingernails. His heart sounds are normal and he has sinus tachycardia. Findings of an examination of the respiratory system are normal. His abdominal exam is also unremarkable. Lab exam reveals a white blood cell count of 9.5 with 25% eosinophils, which of the following is the best diagnostic test to first perform on this patient. Well, again, they've already done the CBC. After that, to diagnose trichinosis, which is most likely what he has, a muscle biopsy can be offered, which is choice C. And the other test that can be done is an enzyme immunoassay. And this test, of course, can detect the antibodies to the trichinella species.